Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. There's been a very cool and showery flavour to the weather recently. Is that set to continue as we head towards and beyond the Jubilee period? I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 31st. And it's a showery picture to start off with. Low pressure over the UK, high pressure centred to the west in the Atlantic. In the short term, those showers start to become more scattered. But then by Thursday, so the start of the long extended weekend, this little disturbance moves down from the northwest and it perks up the showers, particularly in Northern Ireland, Western Scotland, perhaps Wales and Western England. That continues to be where the showers are focused on Friday, but then as we head into the weekend, it's all eyes down to the south because low pressure over France may well begin to move northwards and through Saturday and Sunday, the risk of heavy showers or downpours increases in southern and central Britain. There is a good deal of uncertainty about the details at the moment. It's certainly something to keep an eye on. If I just continue with the animation, what we see is the heavy showers, downpours move into southern and central Britain through Sunday. It's a real washout if this is correct. Drier further north though. And then into the early part of next week, the mixed pattern continues, but low pressure pulls away eastwards so it turns drier at least for a time, though it looks like the Atlantic is beginning to throw more weather systems in our direction. I think it's also worth just focusing on the Jubilee period for a moment. So here's another animation generated using uh, data from the Canadian global model. It begins at 00 GMT Thursday, the 2nd of June, mainly dry across the UK, but here's that disturbance to the northwest, which the GFS was showing. If I run it, you see that brings showers into northwestern parts of the UK, perhaps other parts of the west too for a time. Then, as we go through Saturday and Sunday, it's that area of low pressure over France, which starts to cause trouble. Heavy showers or downpours moving into southern counties. Perhaps on this computer model run, they're not as extensively uh, developed as they were on the GFS. Nonetheless, there is the potential there for wet conditions at times in the south. Taking a look at the Met Office UKV model for the same period, initially showers there over Northern Ireland, perhaps in Western Britain too. This is the disturbance which the Canadian and GFS models were showing. It's a little bit further east, uh, west on this computer model. But the general theme through the period is similar. Thursday and Friday, the risk of showers greatest in the northwest, Northern Ireland. Then through Saturday and into Sunday, the possibility of downpours in southern Britain. The animation finishes at 03 GMT, Sunday the 5th, and the orange shading here is suggesting a very, very heavy rain indeed. Finally, on the Jubilee period, some charts from the European ECM model. On the left, 15 GMT Thursday the 2nd. On the right, 15 GMT Friday the 3rd. Generally agreeing with the theme from the other computer model runs, showers most likely in the northwest at this point. Going forward though to Saturday and Sunday, the downpours here once again being flagged up as a possibility in southern and central counties. It's a mixed and uncertain picture when it comes to the details. The general theme though for the Jubilee period seems to be the greatest risk of rain or showers at least during Thursday and Friday is in the west of Britain and Northern Ireland. Then during Saturday and Sunday it transfers to southern and central counties and there is a possibility of rain turning very heavy, most likely to be the case in the south on Sunday. But stay up to date with the short range forecasts, especially if you're planning outdoor events or street parties. How do the temperatures develop through the course of the week? 15 GMT, Wednesday the 1st, widely 16s or 17s, a little cooler further north. Not much in it though. 
going forwards to Thursday. There is a warming trend showing up, 21 Celsius in the southeast, 19s as we go northwards, 16s in the far north, but generally temperatures picking up there, especially in southern and central regions. Jumping forwards to Saturday the 4th, what I've done here is brought up two charts. For one on the left shows upper air temperatures. It's important because it's illustrating what's happening. There's some very warm air moving northwards out of uh, continental Europe into southern and central Britain. But that doesn't necessarily translate to warmer conditions at the ground level. We're still stuck at around 20 Celsius in the southeast because of the increasing risk of cloud and showers, especially in that southern part of the United Kingdom at this point. And by Sunday the 5th, although the air aloft is potentially very warm, two metre temperatures, so the ones we experience, are only 11 or 12 Celsius in the south. That is because heavy rain is being forecast at this point. Much warmer though as you head northwards, maybe 20, 21 Celsius in western Scotland, the warmest area. The uh, MoGreps 2 meter temperature chart shows things quite nicely. But London here, Thursday and Friday in the Jubilee period is when the highest values are being shown. That's indicated by the columns being completely orange. Then through Saturday and Sunday, an increasing number of the runs are bringing in cooler conditions, cloud and rain possibly, through Monday and Tuesday perhaps a slight upwards trend there as the rain risk begins to recede. It does highlight some uncertainty though because even on Saturday and Sunday there's still a significant amount of orange in these columns and that as I say probably just flags up the uncertainty about how extensive and widespread those showers or downpours will become, if indeed they bother us at all. Going up to Glasgow, a little different here because the warmest part of the Jubilee period in the north is likely to be Saturday and Sunday. The pattern there is due to drier conditions, sunny conditions being most likely in the north later on in the weekend. Rainfall, days 0 to 5, ECM on the left, GFS on the right, all regions seeing some rain. There isn't really a very clear pattern showing though. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day period, and now there are marked differences between the two. ECM shows the wettest conditions in western parts of the UK. GFS though has them in southern and central counties totals of around 70 millimetres there. Largely, I think that's due to the GFS making much more of the potential for thundery downpours to move northwards out of continental Europe during the first weekend. It just flags the uncertainty about the details through this period. Therefore, how do the deterministic models stack up against each other at the end of the first week. The GFS, Tuesday the 7th of June, low pressure still close to the UK, although its influence beginning to decline. The Canadian model at the same point, low pressure centred further east maybe, high pressure in the Atlantic, but still a rather mixed picture. The German icon, very similar to the Canadian. Next, the European ECM, more settled at this stage, high pressure nudging southwards from the north and from the south as well across the UK. Probably not very settled in the longer term though with systems to our west beginning to approach and the possibility of low pressure over the continent still not completely discounted in terms of its influence. Finally, the UK Met Office Low pressure, uh, high pressure also centred to the north, mainly dry at this point, but systems beginning to approach once more from the west. Looking at those as a whole, significant differences in the details between them. In general terms though, changeable probably sums up the theme which they are all pointing towards. There isn't a sign of it turning 
settled for an extended period. So that takes us to the end of the first week. Things looking quite uncertain and changeable. What about week two? What are the trends and the probabilities? I'll begin with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top, mostly above the 30-year average, which is shown by the thick black line. There are a few runs bringing in very warm pulses of upper-level air. They're in a minority, though. Nonetheless, on balance, more are warmer than average than cooler, cooler than average. Rain across the bottom. A few spikes are very large. They could well be suggesting thundery downpours. All in all, though, it doesn't look particularly wet. There is, though, a risk of rain at times, at least showers. Going up to the northwest, and I'm using Belfast to illustrate that, air mass temperatures are close to the average. There's less of a positive anomaly here, just a slight one than there was on the London plot. But there are more rain spikes suggesting an ongoing risk of rain, wetter than in the southeast. The two meter temperature data tables, London, mostly the light orange and the darker orange, 16s to 20s and 21s to 25. There is some red and pink, so the very warm or even hot runs. Those remaining in a small minority at this stage. Temperatures probably summed up as close to or above average. Therefore, at this time of year, it could be warm or even very warm on some days. But there isn't a signal for it to turn hot. No heat wave, according to this. Going up to Belfast, mostly light oranges, the 16s to 20s. Yellows continuing to appear, 11s to 15 Celsius. So cooler in the northwest. And that really fits in nicely with those upper air mass temperature profiles that I've just shown. Looking at the 10-day GEFS ensemble mean pressure plot, quite nondescript really, lower pressure to the northwest, higher to the southwest. The UK, therefore, somewhere in between those. It doesn't look as though high pressure will be dominating. It doesn't look as though a low pressure will be dominating. And the ECM ensemble, supports the same general theme. Could well be that high pressure is just centred a little bit too far east to keep it settled in the UK for any length of time. And the GEFS 10-day pressure anomaly chart, also fairly neutral, just a weak positive anomaly in the east, so pressure over the week as a whole, slightly above the 30-year norm, but only by a small amount. Conversely, in the West, there's just perhaps a negative anomaly beginning to show its hand, but also very, very weak. It's not a strong one at all. All in all, probably summed up as being a very typical, very close to the norm. So, to summarise, week one, it begins showery, and then in the early part of the Jubilee period, so Thursday and Friday, the risk of rain is mostly in Northern Ireland and Western Britain. That changes during Saturday and Sunday when the chance of showers or downpours in southern and central counties increases. In the north, it probably turns drier and warmer. The week finishes on a mixed note, but the details are very uncertain. The general trend is for temperatures to be rising through the week, but they are dependent on sunshine levels. When cloud and showers come along, it will be feeling cool, even though the air mass aloft may well be a warm one. Week two, wet spells, probably most frequent in the northwest. However, there is a risk of showers or even thundery downpours in the south. 
warm in the south, although not a heat wave by any means. Temperatures in the north closer to the average. So, there we have it. Changeable probably sums things up the best. There are likely to be some warm and dry days, although no sign of a heat wave. An ongoing risk of showers or longer spells of rain. And for the all-important jubilee period, Thursday and Friday probably sees a risk of showers in the west and the northwest in particular. Then through Saturday and Sunday, downpours could be threatening southern and central Britain. But do stay up to date with the short-range forecasts for the latest view. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.